and its political power also that on the long term gradually they they're going to come up with some type of uh, a basket of currencies yeah. uh, probably including gold which is what I gather they proposed at the end of the summit in in terms of a, a general goal to work yeah. towards and is, now that, you is that Tony what you read no. Yes, uh, um, fundamentally there is no substitute in, on the horizon for the U.S. dollar. Some people have been talking about the SDRs, which is essentially a, an imaginary currency held on the books of the International Monetary Fund. You, you can't really hold reserves in that, and even if you did, the major shareholder in the International Monetary Fund is the U.S., so uh, there would be a kind of element of circularity mm -hmm. here. The euro seems to have problems of its own, into which one need not go or else we would be there for a long time. Uh, in other words, and if you look at uh, at the moment, no one talks about sterling anymore as a reserve currency, um, nor the yen, and uh, therefore we have gone to the end of the list, and there is no substitute. So uh, my guess is the U.S. dollar, perhaps ever so slowly depreciating, is going to be with us as the reserve currency for a long time and until somebody invents something new. Just a final thought on that. You recall that the world went off gold in 1931-32 on a temporary basis and uh, the gold tried to revive gold. And there have been various attempts uh, including, of course, the, gold, uh, the attempt at the gold exchange standard at Bretton Woods, and nothing ever seems to work. Uh, gold is not coming back. By the way, if gold were $40,000 an ounce, we would all go out into the Nicholson's backyard and we would dig holes. Okay. <laughs> at that point, we could probably mine it profitably. Uh, but uh, the, uh, the, the, the point is that there genuinely is nothing else. And anybody who comes up with something viable will, make, will have made a big contribution. Okay.